Hello, my dear friends. I hope everybody is well. In the past, I've uh, recorded my Erev Shabbos Russia late Thursday night, and I don't get it out to you until sometime on Friday, and I realize that that is not very convenient. People are busy Erev Shabbos. They don't have time to listen to a Russia. I'm going to make a supreme effort to try to record uh, by by Wednesday, Thursday afternoon, get it out to you by later in the day, so you'll have uh, be able to listen to it at your leisure. I hope the material that I record and also the things that Rabbi Melitsky has been sending out, he's been sending out terrific stuff. I hope that gives you food for thought and a basis for conversation over the Shabbos table with your family. My father, Allah Hashem, I've discussed this many times. My father, Allah Hashem, taught me the importance of always looking for Musa Haskell. Whatever happens in life, whether it's something that happens globally or nationally or in our own community or privately in our own lives, there's always a Musar Haskell to be derived from the events. The Kaddish Baruch Hu does not speak to us directly. We don't have divine prophecy. God doesn't send angels to come and deliver messages to us. Eliyahu Hanavi, I'll speak for myself, he never appeared to me. I never had a conversation with Elio and Avi. I suspect that, uh, well, I don't know, maybe some of you have had experiences with Elio and Avi, but I, I never had an experience with Elio and Avi. So, but God has other ways to communicate to man, and that is through the things that unfold in our lives, the different uh, events that take place. Those are all orchestrated by a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Nothing happens by accident, and therefore, there's always a message to be learned. Of course, you have to be percept- receptive to the message, and you have to look for it. It's like if you have a gold mine. If you don't dig, the gold will stay underground, or a, di- a diamond miner, or, or uh, even an oil well. You have to dig to be able to find it. In the same way, the things that happen, they may be messages for us, but if you don't pay any attention, you're not going to understand what God is trying to say. I remember my father sitting at the Shabbos table and he would say, you know, this week this this happened and there's this interesting story and I answered something, I met a certain person and he would he would ask, what what is the moral lesson? What's the Musar Haskell that we could derive from uh, this event? So I want to share with you a Musar Haskell. Uh, we're all in the midst of the uh, pa- pandemic and we wish the pandemic wouldn't be taking place, but there are numerous lessons to be learned from the pandemic and the coronavirus. We hope that we won't need to, to learn the lessons and, the, and they'll, it'll uh, end very, very soon. People will stop be, being sick, but it, it is, it's with us. So what are the lessons that we could learn? So I want to focus on one particular lesson. And in general, also, any time that we could relate things that are going on to, in the world to the Parsha, so then that's like a home run. Then it's, uh, we, we've, uh, we've really found a, a gold mine if there's a connection between what's happening in the world outside and what we're reading about in the Parsha, because in particular, the Parsha is also not, even though there's a Parsha is on a cycle, but there's, the Parsha is God's way of speaking to us on a, on a weekly basis. So there's a, a phrase in this week's Parsha that when I saw it, it just like jumped out at me because it's, it, it beautifully or, or effectively describes what we are experiencing at the present time. The Torah talks about, in Tazrina Mitzvah, it talks about Tzaras. Tzaras is some type of skin affliction. It's not leprosy. It's the Mephorsh and the commentary say it's some kind of supernatural uh, skin affliction. Why did it happen? Because, Chazal say, because when a person speaks Lashon Hara, he's afflicted with Tzaras. The word Mitzorah is a contraction. Motzi Ra, the person who speaks Lashon Hara, finds evil. He looks for, for, for material to be able to make fun of people, to, to, uh, to gossip about people, and he brings out the worst in individuals. He's Motzi Ra, what happens to a to a mitzora? One of the things is that he becomes, he's tamei, he's considered impure, and the chumash says, "Bada yeshev michutz l'machana moshavo." He he has to sit in isolation, and his his camp will be outside uh, the uh, the the boundaries of society. He has to go away. From, from everybody, he has to go on to a, a place, uh, into a forest or a mountaintop. He has to be isolated. He sits in isolation. 
Bada Yeshev, that's exactly what we're experiencing. We're in the middle of Bada Yeshev. Even though we're 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 living at home, but we're we're quarantined. It's something that never happened since the creation of the world. The entire all of society, every single person is sitting just about in almost every single com- country. People are sitting quarantined. They're sitting alone in isolation. And even when you know we're separated from our families and even for our friends and even when we go out. It's also, you know, we go out cautiously. Uh, if, if, if there's a great necessity, we go shopping or we try to get some exercise so we take walks. But even then, it's but and yeshu because we can't get too close to people. We're practicing social distancing and we're walking around with masks that, that hide who we are. Sometimes I see people in the street, I don't even know who they are. And then the person waves to me. So I, know, I realize there must be somebody that I know. And I ask, who, who are you? Please identify yourself. So... We're separate, and then uh, oftentimes uh, I'm walking on the street uh, with with Fagi and, and my and my children, and we're on one side of the street and coming the same way on the from the other end of the street is somebody else. So we'll immediately jump to the to the other side of the street because we don't want to be uh, close to people. So we're we're living in a state of badad yeshe. We're living in social isolation. So there's. I think there's a tremendous lesson to be learned from the fact that we, in the parsha talks about Badad Yeshev, there's a lesson to be learned that relates to the Mitzvah and we can apply it to our own lives as well. Rashi explains, why does the Mitzvah sit in isolation? It's true that he's Tame, he's impure, but there's other forms of Tumah. If a person comes in contact with a corpse, he becomes Tame. But he doesn't have to go Chutz Lamachen, he doesn't have to go outside the camp. He doesn't have to stay away from people. Why is Tsaras unique in that respect? Tsaras, he says, because the Mitzora destroys relationships between people. He destroys relationships within families, between parents and children or husband and wife. And therefore, he needs to, to because he caused divisions and separations in society, so he has to experience the same thing himself by going, be, 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 being vanquished and and going into isolation away from the uh, from the rest of, of society. The plain meaning is that this is a punishment. He caused pain to others by destroying relationships, so he has to experience the same pain. It's what's called mida connected mida tit for tat. He caused that type of pain of, of social distancing, so he should experience social distancing by by having to leave uh, and live on his own. In addition, it's rehabilitative because a Mitzora is insensitive to the pain that he's going to cause to others. He doesn't realize what, what it's like. He doesn't think about it, at least, what, what it means to, ha- to destroy a relationship. So the Torah says, you know what? Get a taste of your own medicine. Let the Mitzora, let him be away from everybody. He caused other people to be, the, the relationship should be destroyed. He's going to get a taste of his own medicine, and then maybe in the future he'll be more sensitive. He'll think before he talks and, and causes uh, that type of harm to other individuals. But I'd like to suggest a, another thought based on the experiences that we're having at the present time. One of the things that I, I feel acutely, and I'm sure everybody feels the same way, is that we have a newfound appreciation for relationships. We all love our children, but to some extent, you know, we take our children for granted. Now we can't see our children. We're isolated from our children, and we have this tremendous longing to be able to, to be even to see where we we get to see them on Zoom or FaceTime. But we want to see them in person. We want to hug them. We want to kiss them. We we have friendships, and we take people for granted, and we. You know, we we don't feel the necessity to 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 go and and see them and talk to them and and befriend them, but in this period of time, we feel isolated from everybody. There's a, a longing that we all have to reestablish relationships. When we take our our walks in the street, and there's somebody that uh, we pass that that we know, so there's there's an automatic attraction, even if they're not uh, a best friend. So people will stand you know far apart, but. How you doing and what's happening? People that are under ordinary circumstances, we would just pass each other by, and no one would engage each other in conversation. But now it's different, and I've even found with strangers, people that I that I don't know at all, people are are so friendly all of a sudden because everybody feels the the need. 
to, to have relationships with other people. And even just to talk to somebody is something that uh, is very important for human beings. The worst, one of the worst punishments is considered to be uh, inhumane is, is, uh, is isolation uh, in, a, in a prison cell to be, to be uh, solitary confinement. That's considered to be a terrible punishment. The, the next to last of the maka was that the uh, choshech and why was Chosha? Why is darkness such as it's the next to last must be the most severe next to Makas Bukharis? Why is it so severe? Because a human being has a need to be able to see other people and to uh, and to relate to them. So we have we, we've developed a, a a much greater appreciation for other people during this period of time of isolation. The Mitzorah, an underlying reason why he speaks Lashon Hara, is because he has a lack of appreciation for other people. People don't talk Lashon Hara about somebody that they respect very much. They, we don't talk Lashon Hara about people that we love. A person doesn't go walking around the street and, and, and slandering uh, their children or their, or their spouse, hopefully, if they have a good relationship. People don't talk about individuals who they hold. And people don't talk about their parents, that they're this and that. Because when you appreciate somebody, why would you want to say something bad about them? Even if everybody has their own chesronas, but we don't have to, to air our dirty laundry with everybody. We don't talk about it. When a person speaks Lashon Hara, it's an indication that he doesn't appreciate the value of people. He takes everybody for granted. And what difference does it make? So I said, this about him and this about her, because it shows a complete lack of appreciation for the individual. So the Torah says, you know what? Somebody who's a mitzor- somebody who speaks Lashon Hara, he's going to become a mitzora, and as a mitzora, he's going to be isolated from the rest of society. The truth is that he's not only isolated because of the the halacha of Badad Yeshev, but if people are repulsed, just like a, a, a leper, they were leper leper colonies because people. Uh, didn't want to be together with uh, uh, it, it, it's irksome to, for people and people were afraid of being in, in the uh, in the presence of a it was a lack of sensitivity but people were afraid of being in the presence of somebody with a skin condition a serious skin condition so a uh, Mitzvah is the same way people nobody wants to be near a Mitzvah he, 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 he's all over his face he's pockmarked and his pimples and this and that so there's a, even a natural resistance to want to be with a Mitzvah but, in, but even if the if, if the person uh, sort of adamant. He says, "I'm not going any place." The Torah says, "Yeah, you have to go." Chutz l'machna, bother Yeshev. You have to sit in isolation. So it's a lesson for the Mitzora, for the Mitzora to understand and appreciate the value of people. People are special. Every single person is choshev. Every single person is a is a human being that has terrific qualities. And the by 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 having to be isolated himself and Developing the sense of longing to be reun- reunited, it, it, it's 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 very painful to be to be sitting outside the society in a, in a in an open field by yourself and you can't talk to anyone and you can't see anyone. the The hope is that that experience will give the mitzora a different appreciation of the value of people. I was thinking after the parsha of Tarizriya mitzora is achrimos kedoshim, and. The comment has often been made, Achrimos Kedoshim. We read those two parshas together very often. Achrimos and then the parsha of Kedoshim. Achrimos means after the death. It refers to the death of the children of Aaron. Kedoshim speaks about Kedoshim. Tio, the Torah says that you should be holy. But it's been pointed out that oftentimes it's Achrimos Kedoshim. It's when somebody passes away, then suddenly they become holy. In other words, suddenly we recognize the value of the person. When the person was alive, yeah, you know, take it for granted. There are so many people that we never even bother saying hello to them. And then one day the person passes away and, oh, I wish I, I could talk to that individual. I know I've felt that way myself. We, uh, you know, it's terrible. Every day we read in the paper about, or on the, in the news about different people that have passed away. M- many of the people are, are, if I go on the Jewish uh, internet sites, I see names of people that I know. I haven't spoken to them for years. And, I feel, besides feeling so terrible of the of the tragedy that they passed away, but I feel, you know, I wish I could speak to the person one more time. I would like to be able to tell that person how much I, I really appreciated them, how, how, how highly I, I think about them. That's Achari Mos Kedoshim. When the person is gone, 
then suddenly you begin to appreciate the, the individual. So I would say that it's significant that Achrimos Kedoshim comes after Tazriya Mitzara because Tazriya Mitzara, the Mitzara is somebody who who doesn't understand, who doesn't appreciate who who individuals are. He takes everybody for granted. So the Torah is saying, don't wait. Tazriya Mitzara is before Achrimos Kedoshim. Don't wait till the person passes away and then ah oh, suddenly now I understand. Now I now I now I realize how chosh the person was. I shouldn't have said lush and har about the person. Don't wait until that point of time. Take corrective action before Bada Yeshu, you sit outside the camp and hopefully you'll understand the value of the of the individual uh, even before the person uh, passes away. There's, you know, we, we there's a concept of tzibur, that the Jewish people are, are united and, and there's strength in unity. The, the, mo- the more you, we are united, the stronger the Jewish people are. Achtos, we always always talk about the importance of Achtos. Achtos, part of Achtos is just because we like people. If, we, if, we, if a person feels close to people because he enjoys their company, that creates Achtos. But Achtos, on a, on a much more significant and meaningful level, is not just because you like the other person's presence. It's because you appreciate the value of the individual, whether it's a spouse or whether it's our children or whether it's our cousins or our, our friends or people that, uh, that, 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 that we know, even though we're somewhat distant. But when you feel their chashev, when you, when you begin to feel the klal yisrael, the great thing, mikam klal yisrael, look at the great things that the Jewish people have able to done. And the truth is, even society, there's a, there's a new achdus that you, it's in the air. People, as I mentioned before, people are total strangers. They, they stop to say hello. Because people in, in these circumstances feel a greater sense of, uh, of unity. But real unity comes from feeling the importance of the individual. So that's a tremendous lesson that, uh, that, that, that I think the Parsha teaches us, and, it, and it's something that's underscored by own, our own experiences. The Mitzora is Bada Yeshev. He sits alone, he sits in isolation, because he doesn't understand the value of people. That's why he's guilty of speaking Lashon Hara. We should be, at this time in our lives, we should be enormously careful not to speak Lashon Hara, because speaking Lashon Hara is something that causes a person to be in isolation. And that's the last thing in the world that we want. We want to be able to come out of our homes. We want to be able to be connected to people. And we have to think about real achdus, which is not just be want to be with people because we enjoy their company, but we, 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 we appreciate the value of every single human being. And that's why uh, we, we feel connection to all of Kali. So let's hope that the, uh, the, the pandemic and the coronavirus will be... Uh, will we'll cease to be to have an impact on us, and uh, I wish everyone as soon as possible. And I wish everyone a very, very wonderful Shabbos.